Good morning. Welcome to worship. You all look very wide awake for daylight saving time weekend. So glad to see all of you. It's a crisp, clear day, and we're delighted that you're all here. This is a very special day for us because we are going to be celebrating the sacrament of baptism for little Michael John Bellingeri, and so we are looking forward to that. Also looking forward to the bells playing this morning. There are a number of uh, announcements in your bulletin. I hope you'll take a look at all of them. Uh, first of all, today is special also because we have Steve Jacoby back with us. And he, <laughs> yay. Now, those of you who are new don't know that Steve brings with him the yummiest sticky buns. And so at coffee hour today, please join us for some delicious sticky buns. We've been looking forward to Steve's return. <laughs> Uh, this week, there is no bell choir rehearsal on Tuesday evening, uh, but on Wednesday, we're having our soup and bread, our Lenten soup and bread suppers and our Bible study. Last week, we had a wonderful uh, conversation and discussion about everything happens for a reason. This week, we have God helps those who help themselves. These are half-truths. People think they're in the Bible, but they really aren't. And so we want to see where they belong with our theology and where they may not. Uh, next Sunday, I just want to let those in the book club know that it's been postponed because the book has been, is so popular, it's very hard to find. And so a lot of the book club members haven't gotten the book yet, so it's postponed till April. Also next Sunday, we're doing our PB&J, our peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that are going to the Salvation Army. Uh, there's an um, insert in your bulletin for Easter basket donations. No plastic eggs, please, but the grass and uh, stuffed animals, some other candies, whatever you would like. Uh, we could use donations because they, we make about how many, Betty? 24 and 28 baskets, and they usually are delivered to the Salvation Army, and they are given to children who are in need. Um, we also, in two weeks, have a chat and chew. Uh, we are going to have little mini groups for people to discuss their hopes and dreams and future visions for this church. And so it's a time to share your views. And then afterwards, we're going to have a wonderful luncheon uh, catered by Romanelli's. So uh, please remember to sign up for that so that we know how much food we really need. And now, let us begin worship by listening to the bells.
please join me in the call to worship that's found in the bulletin. Wade into the waters of love. Come to the fountain of forgiveness and find the renewing streams of mercy. Come feel the water and be refreshed. Know again the joy of your baptism. <coughs> Let us worship God. Join me in singing hymn number 185, verses 1, 3, and 4. There is a prayer found in the bulletin. Please join me in unison. With gratitude, merciful God, we remember that you have cleansed us and claimed us in the waters of baptism. You call us by name, but we fill our ears with the sounds of the world. We have often followed our own paths that have led us far from you. We forget to respond in love to your grace. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to be the people you intend for us to be. Increase our trust to know that all we need is found in you. You have marked us as your own, and you love us without limit. Wash us with your love again, so that with clean hearts we may walk in the way of Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. I would like to invite children, uh, if they would like to come up and sit along the bell table over here, they can come up. And I'd also like to invite the Bell and Jerry family and godparents for little Michael to come up and stand on this side as well. Hi, good to see you this morning. Well, you all can see little Michael here. And 
you know, in a few minutes, the congregation, the grown-ups, are going to make some promises for little Michael. And you're part of the congregation. So in a sense, you're kind of saying the same thing that the grown-ups are saying. Okay, so I'm going to ask you some questions that we always ask at the baptism time. First of all, if you see little Michael crying, will you help him to stop crying and comfort him? Yes, okay. And if he falls down, will you help him to get back up? Okay. And if you know that he's lost, he'd probably be crying if he was lost, but will you help him find his way back home? Okay, thank you for that. I have to get my little book here. Okay. And we'll begin. Friends, hear the words of our Lord Jesus. All authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. Obeying the words of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death and unites us with Jesus in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. Some questions for the parents. Do you desire that your child be baptized? Do you reaffirm your own faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior? Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your son? And to the godparents, do you promise by praying with them and by your support and encouragement, help this child to be a faithful Christian? Okay. And to the congregation, do you as members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture little Michael by word and deed with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of Christ's church? Do you? Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, we give you thanks. In countless ways, you have revealed yourself in ages past and have blessed us with signs of your grace through water and the Spirit. In the beginning, your Spirit hovered over the dark deep. From this formless void, you brought forth light and life. By the waters of the flood, you cleaned the world and made with Noah and his family a new beginning for all people. In the time of Moses, you led your people out of slavery through the waters of the sea, making a covenant with them in a new land. At the appointed time in the waters of the Jordan, when Jesus was baptized by John, you sent your spirit upon him. Pour out your spirit upon us and upon this water that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth for Michael. May all who now pass through these waters be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from sin to righteousness, and new life in you. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Okay. What name shall this child be called? Michael. Michael John, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Michael John, you have been sealed by the Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. May the Spirit uphold you and give you a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of courage, and a spirit of joy in the 
presence of God now and forever. Amen. Well, this is the best part of my job. <laughs> Michael, John, you don't know it yet, but this is your new church family. And they have promised to nurture you and to teach you all about the Lord Jesus. You're looking all around here. Yeah. You also don't know it, but you have a new last name. Your name is still Bell and Jerry, but it's also Christian. Just like everyone else in this room who has been baptized, you have been adopted and made a child in the family of God. And so you have the new name of Michael John Christian. Such a good boy. You see, I had a Michael. Wouldn't have been that quiet. <laughs> okay, let us pray. Merciful God, you call each of us by name and promise us your constant love. We have now baptized Michael John in your name and sealed his identity in you. Watch over this little one, and as the years go by, deepen his understanding of your love. Gracious God, we pray for Bianca and John and parents everywhere. Give them wisdom and patience to guide their children in the way of Jesus Christ. Let your peace and joy dwell in their home, that their family life may be instructed by faith, sustained by prayer, and governed by love. This morning, Lord God, we rejoice with you that Michael will always know who he is, that as he faces the mysteries of life, he will always remember that he is yours, for on this very day, he was baptized. We pray your blessing on their family and on the life that awaits them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Welcome, little Michael John, and here is your baptism certificate for your mom and dad. And now go to serve and love the Lord. Amen. Okay, and you guys can go to Sunday school. The words of the baptism hymn are written in the bulletin. You don't have to look it up. Our scripture lesson this morning is actually the story of Jesus' baptism. It comes from the first chapter of Mark, beginning at the fourth verse. Listen for God's word to you this morning. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. When they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. 
John announced, someone is coming soon who is greater than I, so much greater that I am not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. One day, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me, please? O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, after I saw my sermon title in print this week, I realized that it might frighten some people. For instance, the personnel committee might be a little frightened that I have something secret that I want to share with the congregation that they're not aware of, although I sort of doubt that because you all have known me for a very long time. And admittedly, I've st said a lot of things in sermons that have been sort of confessions. For instance, I, I uh, confessed one time that I hate one of the popular, well, hate is a strong word, I dislike uh, a popular Christmas song. Little Drummer Boy. I can't stand that song. I mean, think about it. Who in their right mind would let a little kid with a drum near a sleeping baby? Really. I mean, just too stupid for me. And I've also owned up to the fact that I don't like amusement rides. I mean, I like the carousel, but nothing that goes really fast. And if my sons were here, you know, my family has never been let off the hook. If my sons were here this morning, they would look a little frightened of what I might be saying now about them. And we all know I never let Richard off the hook. He's in a lot of sermons. But that's not it. Today, oh, wait a minute, I have to mention one other thing. A couple years ago, Christmas Day fell on Sunday, and I came to church in a costume with wings, and I said I was Gabriel. So folks, look out. Christmas falls on Sunday this year. So perhaps I've got a secret might be a little nerve-wracking for some people, but let me put your minds at ease. The secret I'm referring to is not mine. It's a secret that belongs to the writer of Mark's gospel. Mark is a great storyteller. Those of us who love to read know that one of the big decisions a writer has to make is when the story's secret will be revealed. Now, every story has some secret, and the writer has to decide whether to let people know early in the story or surprise them at the end. Mystery writers often wait to the last chapter to show who done it. But soap opera type shows practically um, worry about when they're going to reveal the secret. Will Katrina find true happiness with Chase, who actually had an affair with her best friend? Years ago, years and years ago, the television or radio might have said, tune in tomorrow for the next episode of As the Stomach Churns. In other words, turn the page, tune in again, and you will hear the secret. Well, there are other stories, though, where the writer chooses to tell the secret right up front. We know the secret sometimes even before the characters do. Remember innocent little Red Riding Hood? Oh, Grandma, what big eyes you have. Well, we know the secret about those big eyes and who's really under the cap and under the covers. The wolf, disguised as Grandma, is waiting for little Red Riding Hood. And another children's story, the ugly duckling. He was shunned because he was just homely. Finally, he becomes the beautiful swan we know that he's going to be. Preacher Tom Long tells a cute story about preeminent scientist Albert Einstein. One spring day, Einstein was in front of um, the Nassau Inn in Princeton. Now, 
he was not known for his great wardrobe. He just kind of threw clothes together. He had other things on his mind than his wardrobe. And he was looking a little strange that day. A lady got out of her chauffeur-driven car and thought he was the bellboy. And she get, told him to take her luggage into the lobby. Albert Einstein did. He picked it up. He took it into the lobby. She gave him a very small tip and he went off on his way to ponder the mysteries of the universe. Well, I don't know if that's really an accurate story, but it's a funny story because we know the secret the lady did not. That strange looking man was the most celebrated intellect of his time. You see, some stories gain power from our knowing the secret right in the beginning. The Gospel of Mark is such a story. The writer of Mark knows who Jesus is, and Mark decides to let his readers know right from the beginning. If you notice, Mark doesn't have any baby stories, cute baby stories in his gospel. Matthew and Luke definitely tell us about Jesus before he is born. They have angels coming to Mary and Joseph to tell them that Jesus is going to come. We see a sky full of angels singing to the shepherds in the fields, and the shepherds then running into Bethlehem to see the new baby. We even hear about kings coming far from the east to see the, the newborn king. Mark, on the other hand, just states the fact right at the beginning. The first verse says, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. The secret is out from the first sentence. And if by chance you missed it, the truth is restated in the, in the story's opening scene. John the Baptist, looking a little weird, baptizes Jesus. When Jesus comes up out of the Jordan River, the sky is torn apart like a cloth. That's what the original Greek puts it like. And then the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus like a dove, and God who cannot be silent a moment longer, tells the secret. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The translation we read this morning said, you are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. Actually, that shouldn't seem like a secret at all. This is the same God who lovingly spoke the universe into being. The same God who told Moses, I am who I am. The same God who told Jacob and Joshua, I will never leave you or forsake you. The same God who spoke through Isaiah actually to us, you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. It's not an accident that Mark puts the scene at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry before he has done anything remarkable. You see, the voice from heaven affirms that Jesus is God's beloved. This is Jesus apart from anything he ever will do. This identity is the basis for everything Jesus will do. I think this is an important message for us to hear because Jesus' baptism story mirrors ours. In baptism, we too find the secret of our identity. We learn who we are in God's eyes. Baptism is so full of symbols and meanings for us. It signifies so many things. Washing, cleansing, new birth, incorporation into a family of faith. But first and foremost, baptism seals a person's identity as a beloved child of God, a member of God's own family. This is who we are. The secret is out. We are beloved, and because of Jesus, we are the redeemed children of God. Somehow this seems right, especially when we baptize a sweet little baby like Michael. So sweet, so innocent, so beautiful. Certainly, babies of all people are beloved children of God. But sometimes, Young people and adults, no matter what the age, let feelings of anger and inadequacy and failure or guilt hide 
the people. They really are. We forget the secret. When the challenges, the wounds, and the fears of life come upon us, we forget the secret. But we mustn't forget because we are forever sealed by the Spirit as God's beloved children. And all the promises of the Old Testament are ours as well. God said, I will never leave you or forsake you. God meant that for us. Which brings me to the events that are happening in our world today. The horrible war in the Ukraine where thousands are being killed and fighting and bombing. Natural disasters seem to happen all too often as well. Wildfires in the West, tornadoes that destroy whole communities, floods that are so destructive. Just a month ago, there were floods and mudslides in Brazil. Hundreds died and hundreds more are still missing. I think it's easy for us to agree that God did not cause the war to happen in the Ukraine. Greedy, evil people decided to do that. But it's difficult to find someone to blame in natural disasters. In the case of Brazil, I read many articles about searching for people under the mud. On TV, I saw people praying in churches. One picture really touched my heart. Someone placed a note on the mud where their house used to be and where members of their family were still buried. And that note read, see you on the other side. Those kinds of pictures lead me to believe that some, if not many, of those people were people of faith. And this is where their identity and our identity as beloved children of God shifts us from the depths of despair to glimmers of hope. No one has promised us untroubled lives. God doesn't say he puts a bubble over us at baptism. God doesn't say that we won't have illness or pain or accidents or distress. The truth is we will experience some of those things. Life is not easy. Even Jesus, God living among us, experienced those things. Jesus did not even escape death. But the good news is death was not the final word for Jesus, and it's not the final word for any of us. God has power over anything life or death can throw at us. God gives us the victory through Jesus. God has already given new life to the victims of war and to those who lost their lives in natural disasters. God is already working, reworking, the heartbreak of the people who have lost loved ones. Locally, we have ties to the Salvation Army that was already on the ground when the war in Ukraine started. We here at the Margate Community Church are working on plans to support the Salvation Army's efforts in this vital work. Christians and people of all faiths show their love and support in tangible ways to the victims near and far. In that way, we become God's hands here on earth. Through us, God is already reworking disaster and suffering and grief. And please remember, whenever we do something for someone else to help them, we become partners with God to show God's love and grace for all people. Amen.
Bell playing is a lot of fun. There's openings in the Bell Choir if you'd like to join. Tuesday nights at 6. I always do commercials here and there. It's fun. As we come to our time of prayer, I'd like to remind you of some of the concerns of our church family. We're continuing prayers for Jack Young, by Hannah, David McCann, Tracy Herring, who is recovering well from surgery, Ken Heck, Patricia Zappone, Cynthia Mario, Judy Haverstick doing much better, another Judy having uh, treatments for a recurrence of cancer, Ken, John, Dave, Ian, Fran, Joan Carey, who is back in New Jersey at Summers Place Rehab in Egg Harbor Township. We're praying for Pat, Bobby Mario's granddaughter Lexi and family. We're praying for Terry Shaw. I found out uh, just on Friday that she has a fractured kneecap, and so she's going to be out of commission, so to speak, for 12 weeks. We're praying for Chrissy Roche's family, her husband Tim, her dad Ray on hospice, and her sister Dawn. We're praying for Marge, Jean's former secretary. We're praying for Martha's cousin Diane and Kathy McLaughlin. Are there any other joys or concerns to share? Yes. Uh oh. <laughs> Age is just. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, uh, don't anybody ask me what birthday this is. I always say the same thing. Age is just a number, and mine is unlisted. <laughs> Are there any better joys or concerns? <laughs> Let's join our hearts and minds in prayer. Let us pray. God of wind and water, stillness and storm, your spirit sweeps over the surface of the sea. Give us faith to seek you in times of trouble, to reach out your hand to us when we feel as though we are sinking so that we may believe and worship you. Eternal God, amid all the turmoil and changes of this world, your love is steadfast and your strength never fails. In times of danger and trouble, beat to us as sure guardian. Guide the leaders of the world with your wisdom. Bring this horrible war in Ukraine to an end. We look to the day when guns and bombs will be made into farming tools and all your children will live in safety. Almighty God, merciful Father, we know that your thoughts are not our thoughts and your ways are not our ways. We do not understand the devastation of so many people in such a short time. Let peace come to the Ukraine. Loving Lord, we come to you trusting in your mercy and knowing that your steadfast love will never end. Comfort those in distress. Grant them courage and hope to face the future. Look with mercy on those who have been harmed or displaced. Grant them your strength to meet the days ahead. Allow those who are affected to experience your peace, which passes all understanding. Move in those who are able to give aid. Grant that we may be your hands and heart on this earth. Be with all who offer your assistance. May your spirit uphold them to face the challenges ahead. Give us all the assurance of your presence, even in this time, so that we may cling to your promise of hope and life shown to us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We pray for the church universal where all your children are invited to be part of your family. We ask your blessing on little Michael and his family, and we thank you for the gift of baptism for each of us where we are marked and sealed as Christ's own forever. Be with our church here in Margate, May we continue to grow in grace. Bless the works of love that are done in your name here in our church family and around the world. We have many concerns and worries. You have heard the concerns of our church family here this morning. 
Listen now as we silently pray for those concerns that lie deeply in our hearts. Grant us your peace. Be with us today and may we feel your presence with us as we go ahead into this new week. We pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in singing hymn number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness, verses 1 and 3. Invited to our coffee hour just straight down the hallway as far as you can go, and we'd love to see you all there. And now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all those whom you love today and forever. Amen.